Here I'm going to show you how to properly set up a large-scale NVR system. I'm using three 24-port PoE switches on the right-hand side and one of our 64-channel NVRs by Avalonix. These are the Avalonix Premium Series NVRs. On the back of the NVRs, you'll see that there are two network ports here. The one on the right-hand side that says lit up it says 1, and the one on the left-hand side says 2. So they're LAN 1 and LAN 2. Traditionally, when you want to deploy an IP camera system with multiple cameras and multiple switches going to different parts of your building, what you want to do is try to put all your cameras on one LAN segment so they're separated from the rest of your network. So what I have here is this switch is coming from my router that provides internet. So think of this as a router that my NVR is connected to on LAN 1. And having done that, I can access my NVR for remote viewing on any computer that's on that network and away from home because I have internet connection. Now LAN 2, notice it's not lit up. There are no lights on it because this blue cable isn't connected to anything. And what I'm going to show you here is how to properly set up a segment or network segment that's isolated behind the NVR just for the cameras. Now, with our testing with the Avalonix Premium Series cameras, you don't need a router as long as you've already assigned static local IP addresses to your cameras. On the NVR itself, you can use a mouse to access the on-screen menu. And you can go into Network and specify what is the IP address for your NIC1 or NIC2, so LAN1 or LAN2 is the same as NIC1 and NIC2. My NIC1 is set to DHCP, so what that means is it's automatically getting an IP address. DHCP requires a router, so that connection coming from my router, which also is giving me internet, assigned me a 192.168.1.195 IP address for the LAN1 on my NVR. LAN2 DHCP is turned off and we manually set an IP address for the NVR to be 192.168.2.100. So what that means is every camera that we're going to put on these switches is going to be 192.168.2. something. And that something could be 2 through 254, except for 100, which is being taken by this NVR. So on this camera, I've set a particular IP address. Now let me show you how to first get the cables connected. This blue cable has to get linked from the NVR to a PoE switch. Here, I'm going to connect it to the uplink port on my switch. So on these switches, all of these ports are PoE. It's a 24-port switch, so one through 24 are PoE, and 25 and 26 are uplink ports. So is this fiber uplink. We're not using fiber, we're just using CAT5e. It's also a gigabit port here, gigabit, gigabit, 100 megabits. So this is the nuance that you need to understand in terms of properly deploying the PoE switches. All the PoE ports are 100 megabits. So that's how much maximum data they'll push. And they're great for IP cameras. But if you accidentally plug in your switch from here to here, that's the wrong way of connecting because you're creating a bottleneck because you're actually going to throttle the data. You need to use these two ports to connect to either of these or either of that. It doesn't matter which order you do them in. So what I've done right now is I've connected the gigabit LAN port on the back of my NVR. Now it's lit up to the uplink port on my first switch. And the lights are lit for my camera. And I can go to my NVR and use the main menu. And my camera's there. Now, how did I add the camera? Go to camera on the main menu. And I'm going to first delete the entry that I had. Now, to make things a little bit more easier, I'm going to disconnect my NVR from the internet. Only thing that's working now is this local network I've created. So if I hit the search, 
device. It's going to find available IPs for Avalonic series IP cameras and it found it. Found that particular camera and we set it to a static IP address of 192.168.2.109 and we specified a username and password. As long as the admin user password for the NVR and the cameras is the same, all you need to do is click this checkbox and hit add. In a few seconds and clicks, you get a green signal on the status and your camera is connected here. That's how easy it is. So what I just showed you is you don't even need a router to connect from the NVR to the cameras as long as the cameras are set to correct IP addresses. The other thing is if you want to quote unquote daisy chain your switches, I'm going to use this thin cable and connect it in between the switch in the bottom and the one in the middle. It doesn't matter if I'm going from which port to which on the top as long as I'm using the uplink ports which are gigabit to interconnect. Now I'm going to take my camera and I'm going to connect it to one of these ports. Wait a few seconds for the camera to light up, the data to start flowing through, the power to start flowing through, and I revisit my NVR to see if it's detected my camera yet or not. I can go into main menu, camera, and verify that this status signal is green. So it took about a minute and a half for the camera to start restreaming, and here we go. I just had to wait. So what happens is the camera has to fully boot up and for the data to flow through. So now what's happening is this camera is connecting from the switch on the top or in the middle. The data goes from here, this switch, to this one, and then relays back into the NVR. So that's how you set up this network. Now, another point to make here is that I've set up a standalone high definition CCTV system. My recorder is not connected to the internet. The only cable I have is going into my switch and the switches are in no way connected to the internet. That gray and yellow cable are not connected to anything of this setup. So you can actually set up a standalone system that's completely disconnected from the network while using PoE switches and NVRs. That's the beauty of the professional equipment that we sell at CCTV Camera World. Now before I let you go, if you've got a lot of switches and you're sending a lot of data back to this first switch that's connected into the NVR, say if you had three or four switches coming back with 24 ports of cameras all the way back to this one bottom switch, that's a bad idea. What you want to do is get another smaller switch. I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to use this switch. There's no internet on this right now. All I'm doing is using it to create more ports and let this be my router quote unquote to handle a lot of data. So the handling capacity for this switch is several gigabits. So what it can do is you can run maybe one additional switch to this one and then run those two together with one cable back to here, run the third switch in another port and the fourth one in another port and then connect it to your NVR. So basically what I'm doing is taking the LAN port out of this, taking my blue cable and connecting it to one of the available ports on the switch. I'm going to use another cable to connect this bottom switch right here. And then instead of having this switch send data through that, I'm going to connect it directly to my little switch here. So now I've got my NVR connected to the switch, or you could even have a router that's on the same subnet as the cameras. I've got two more additional switches connected here. So now this is acting as the main switch for all the data throughput and making sure this has enough throughput or data handling capacity bandwidth to handle all the data that's coming from your cameras. If you don't have a good switch here, this is going to cause frame skipping, poor quality video, etc. So looking back at this footage here, I'm going to make it main screen, full screen view. So now you can see it's refreshing. I'm waving my hands. The timestamp is updating. It's all in real time. Move my hand. 
Oops. Very little latency, perfect quality video that you're getting from the setup now. Hopefully, this setup gives you some insight on the capabilities of the Avalon Extreme Series products that we offer and what you can do in setting up your own professional IP camera or PoE camera system from CCTV Camera World. Thanks for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.